Spotlight East Windsor with Mayor Janice Miranoff. Welcome to Spotlight East Windsor with Mayor Janice Miranoff. I'm Dick Cunningham. This is the broadcast for Wednesday, December 15th. We have a number of things on the program today, a lot of exciting new things, and let's get right to it. Mayor, it's all yours. Wow. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a really brief COVID hit, and then we'll move on to uh, uh, township news. So um, there uh, are uh, in our town, our area, there's a lot of uh, vaccination clinics going on, booster clinics, uh, clinics for children. Um, so I'm not going to try to go through what all of the requirements are uh, and any of the back uh, information, uh, but I do really want to stress to everyone that uh, you should uh, check the information. If necessary, check with your doctor, uh, use your good sense, uh, and consider getting vaccinated. Um, and if uh, you have gotten vaccinated, consider getting a booster. Uh, all of the regulations and timelines are out there at this point uh, for uh, all three, for the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the J&J. &J. Uh, and the vaccines are also available now for children uh, at certain ages. So uh, check it all out. Uh, do uh, what uh, makes sense for your health, the health of your family uh, and your um, colleagues at work. Uh, and let's try together to get our community more healthy uh, to get our state in a better direction uh, so that we can feel more comfortable to uh, do all the kinds of things we've always enjoyed, uh, whether it's going out to restaurants, theater, uh, hosting folks at our homes, uh, joining in on parties, travel, and so forth. So uh, any information, uh, you know, give a call to the East Windsor Health Department, and uh, we are blasting out uh, flyers on uh, some of the localized clinics. So stay safe, uh, stay well, and use good sense. We have one, two, three, four, five new things, and new is good. And in this case, it's food. Tell us about it. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that we have had a lot of activity in East Windsor uh, over the past year or two is new business. Uh, it's taken all kinds of forms and shapes. Uh, and uh, has been actually on uh, all sides of the town, both on the Turnpike side as well as on the western side of East Windsor, west of Route 130. So I'm going to talk about some of the retail, some of the restaurants. Uh, I know that's always a point of happiness for folks. So um, I'm going to start, though, without. I'm going to start on a uh, new uh, fitness center, so uh, Crunch Fitness, uh, which is in the Windsor uh, Crossing Shopping Center. So that's the shopping center on Route 33. It is directly across from the Home Depot. There are a number of other stores in there that you might want to check out. But uh, Crunch Fitness is certainly a tremendous asset to the community. They had actually opened right near the beginning of the um, uh, some of the pandemic, and uh, they've just had a grand reopening so that they can uh, reintroduce people to the facility and. Uh, also, the safety protocols that they do have in place. So uh, the uh, facility is just over 24,000 square feet, so it's quite sizable. Exercise facility has all kinds of state-of-the-art workout machines, uh, motion weights, uh, cardio equipment, sauna, group fitness classes, uh, uh, and um, over uh, 200 fitness and exercise programs. So. Uh, they have professional trainers that work out individual uh, routines uh, for folks. So you can go up to their website and you can see uh, all of the equipment that's available. Uh, you can see what's involved in a membership. Uh, you also can see what all of their different classes and program opportunities are. And uh, assuming you're a member or whatever the criteria are, uh, you can look at those and consider signing up. So. Uh, they uh, do have extensive uh, locations. They have actually 21 locations in New Jersey and um, others uh, in a few other uh, countries. So their current hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., Friday, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., and then Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So uh, check them out, and uh, we uh, welcome them. We wish them great success here in East Windsor. 
So I'm going to just segue right into the other uh, new uh, things we have. Uh, so uh, the newest, uh, we literally uh, were just there. We literally just cut the ribbon. They've only been open a matter of days. And that is Popeyes, uh, often uh, uh, referred to as uh, Popeyes, uh, I guess, Louisiana Kitchen. Um, so they are in Route 571, Princeton Heights Town Road. Uh, they have gone into the space that was formerly occupied by KFC. Uh, they've got the kind of not greatest orange looking um, sign, but you know we'll kind of live with it. I know they're very popular. They're doing well. So uh, they are an American-based uh, but multinational restaurant uh, chain. Uh, they uh, their specialty is fried chicken. Uh, they've got different you know mild, hot varieties. But they also uh, offer a variety of other foods on the menu, uh, uh, including uh, chicken sandwiches, chicken uh, tenders, chicken nuggets, uh, uh, shrimp dishes, and uh, assortment of selected sides uh, that they specialize in. So, uh, you know, we uh, want to welcome them to East Windsor. Uh, I have been by there several days, and including the day that I cut the ribbon, uh, and uh, they are packed. Um, so you can actually dine in or you can take out or what is really popular is that you can drive through. Uh, so if you drive through, kind of keep an eye out for uh, the peak times uh, because right now uh, there is a, a great deal of um, traffic uh, uh, patronizing of the, uh, of the uh, Popeye's uh, restaurant. So uh, we do welcome them. Uh, they are very popular and you know, we're sure they're going to be a uh, great success. Uh, it's certainly a very prominent location uh, right around from the town hall and right next to one of our most favorite places, Perkins. So give it a shot. Also, I guess while I'm continuing right along here uh, to things going on on food, so McDonald's uh, is in a rebuild that is on Route 130 at the intersection of Dutch Neck Road and on Route 130 southbound. Uh, the entire building was demolished uh, in order for the company to do a total new uh, build of their uh, modern uh, prototype for the McDonald's. So that continues. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't have a date. My guess is it's going to be at least another month or two. Um, and then uh, you'll be able to go back to your favorite East Windsor McDonald's location. So let's move that along, McDonald's. Chipotle's, so another favorite um, popular uh, eatery. Uh, so they uh, are in the process of uh, doing work on their site. So they are moving into what was the former Capital One Bank pad site up on Town Center Plaza. That's on Route 130 northbound. Town Center Plaza is where the ShopRite is located and a whole host of other stores. Uh, so they uh, did all of their... Uh, due diligence, they have received all their permits, uh, and uh, they are in uh, construction there now if you go by. Uh, so we'll keep tabs on them, and uh, you know we're hopeful that uh, by springtime uh, they'll be open and ready to serve the community as well. Uh, it's a very popular uh, Mexican-type uh, uh, style uh, food. Uh, most of you probably know that. And you can also, uh, for Chipotles, when they do open, You'll be able to go inside, but you'll also be able to order online and pick up. So the last one I'm just going to give a plug to. They're pretty recent. We did an opening uh, for them, but uh, they are located at the Windsor Center uh, Shopping Center. And that's where the Staples and Aldi's and Ross Dress for Less are all located, right at the intersection of Route 130 southbound and Princeton Heights Town Road. And that is Spice Walk. So they are uh, in what was the former Smashburger, the corner space right in the center. So great prime time uh, visibility. Uh, and they are a family owned restaurant. It's uh, uh, Asian fusion dishes, uh, including uh, chicken, beef, lamb, seafood, uh, various vegetable entrees and uh, cooked in all kinds of uh, different manners. So you can uh, Go online and check them out. You can go in and get the menu or go in and uh, go through the line and order. Uh, they have a great spacious uh, area where you can go in and uh, sit down and order and have your meal. So uh, we want to welcome them once again uh, and uh, wish them good success. And, you know, we encourage people to uh, patronize all of the different stores and 
restaurants in East Windsor because, you know, we want to make sure they stay here, that uh, they're able to thrive, that the people that work there are able to continue to have their localized jobs. And, you know, we have such a great assortment of stores and restaurants that, you know, we're pretty fortunate in East Windsor. We've got about three and a half miles on Route 130 and then some of the offshoots uh, on uh, Route 33 and Princeton Heights Down Road and then on the eastern side of East Windsor, uh, there's um, uh, multiple shopping centers uh, there as well. So let's support East Windsor businesses. Spotlight East Windsor with Mayor Janice Miranoff, the broadcast for Wednesday, December 15th. East Windsor Sustainable Jersey Silver Level Certification, and I noticed that the word again is in green. It's true. So we actually could say again and again. So uh, East Windsor was actually first silver certified in uh, 2015. Prior to that, we had been bronze level certified. Uh, and then in 2018, uh, we were recertified. And then this year, 2021, we were honored uh, to be recognized at an event hosted by Sustainable Jersey. And once again, we're certified uh, silver level um, certification. So what does any and all of that mean? Uh, so uh, Sustainable Jersey uh, is a um, private but statewide voluntary um, certification program uh, and it is for New Jersey municipalities that uh, want to go green, save money, uh, and sustain the quality of life in their communities over a long period of time. So you know those are all terrific goals. Uh, and, you know, we've always said in East Windsor that green bring, brings green. Um, and uh, I think this program really does underscore that. So um, we were uh, able uh, in East Windsor to become certified by uh, achieving a certain number of points. Uh, there's a, a whole host of action items and programs and initiatives that uh, you can present to Sustainable Jersey. Uh, and then there are points awarded for each of the uh, different initiatives. So East Windsor um, was able uh, to achieve um, 365 points uh, for our township initiated programs and actions. And they were actually in 33 actions in 12 different categories. And just to provide an example of some of the things, they covered uh, uh, actions such as creating an East Windsor Green Team, uh, many of our community outreach programs that we do. Uh, we've got a whole host of them, uh, you know, our um, Adopt-a-Spot program, some of our business award programs, our emergency communications planning, our municipal on-site uh, solar systems, uh, our farmland preservation program, our community garden, uh, the uh, business recognition programs we do, as well as the open space preservation and uh, our community recycling and paper shredding uh, types of events. And so really a whole host of things, all of which are intended um, to uh, reduce uh, energy use, uh, to green our community, uh, and to uh, enhance the uh, health, uh, the environmental health of East Windsor Township. and. Uh, uh, improve the quality of life for the residents and businesses that call East Windsor home. So I know I hear from residents all of the time uh, how excited they are to live here, uh, aside from it being an outstanding, uh, almost perfect location. Uh, you know, so many of the things we do provide an environment, you know, our uh, uh, forestry, our tree planting, our preservation of open space, our preservation of farmland, uh, really add um, to the uh, atmosphere in the community for our businesses and our residents. So uh, this is actually a big honor uh, in East Windsor. Uh, we were one of only about 25 municipalities that achieved silver certification in 2021. So we're very proud and we also want to do a shout out to our East Windsor Green Team, uh, especially uh, the chairman, Ron Ballant, who also chairs our environmental commission. and. He is very dedicated, he works very hard, and really we couldn't achieve these successes in the township without his leadership and all of his hard work. So congratulations to our East Windsor Green Team, and uh, East Windsor is very proud to once again uh, achieve uh, this uh, prestigious recognition. Monday, December 6th was an important day in East Windsor as it saw the township building surrounded in candlelight. 
We did. Uh, so uh, December 6th, uh, we participated along with other communities uh, in Women's Space Communities of Light. Uh, this is a uh, creative initiative that was started up by Women's Space uh, to allow citizens and businesses and communities to show support for Women's Space and for its mission. So Women's Space is the primary provider uh, in our region of services to victims of domestic violence. Uh, they provide uh, support and shelter uh, and resource opportunities uh, to give uh, folks who are in those types of really terrible and tragic situations. Uh, they, give him, I, they give them the opportunity for a new lease on life. They uh, allow them to be able to leave those situations and be able to have the kind of support and resources that they need. A lot of times people are reluctant to get out of those situations because they're afraid or they don't have the financial means. They don't know what they're going to do, where they're going to go, um, how they're going to get um, help. So Women's Space is really a blessing in providing uh, that uh, kind of support. So the Communities of Light uh, is a, um, an event whereby we uh, sell luminary kits uh, they're ten dollars each and you get uh, six uh, candles and we tell residents and businesses to join with us at the municipal building on December 6th that's the declared day for uh, communities of light and what we do is we um, put the um, candles out around the perimeter and walkways of the municipal building uh, and then we light them so it's really kind of an awesome sight uh, if you've ever driven by or participated with us or seen that and the bottom line of the event uh, by doing that it's really to shine a light uh, on the issue of domestic violence which is prevalent in all of our communities uh, throughout the state and and the nation people want to think maybe not uh, but it really doesn't know any boundaries uh, in terms of race religion uh, socioeconomic it's really um, it's really an, a serious issue and a lot of times it's kind of hidden so this is to shine a light on the fact that it's a concern in all of our communities. It's to shine a light of hope for the victims that uh, there is uh, support and a better way, and also to uh, raise money uh, for Women's Space so they can continue to provide the great services and resources that they do uh, for uh, victims of domestic violence. So we had a very successful night. It was actually a really nice night uh, weather-wise. Uh, we don't always have that uh, joy uh, when we participate in Communities of Light. So it was a great evening. Uh, we had good participation. Uh, kind of shout out to the uh, uh, Petty School. Uh, they sent over their uh, girls uh, basketball uh, team members. We were uh, thrilled to have them join us, uh, along with uh, our uh, members of council and uh, police uh, uh, department members and uh, other citizens. So. Uh, you know, we uh, want to applaud uh, Women's Space for their great work and our domestic uh, violence victim response team uh, for the great uh, support that they provide as well uh, to victims in our community. So, good night. Spotlight East Windsor with Mayor Janice Miranoff, the broadcast for Wednesday, December 15th. Getting from point A to point B in your car will probably be a little bit more pleasant thanks to some road work. Yeah, so... Um, you know, I have to say this is always one of the big topics for residents is the condition of the roads uh, and uh, um, the not good condition of the roads sometimes. Um, so we do try. Uh, we obviously can't go out and fix every road uh, every year, but we do try to proactively every year identify a number of roads that we can go out and um, do improvements. And one of the things we're always looking for is funding. Uh, because it, they're very expensive to do roadway improvements. So uh, we've got uh, two projects that I just want to touch on. So one, uh, we had gotten a New Jersey Department of Transportation grant of $530,000 uh, for roadways in Cranberry Manor. So uh, these were very deteriorated, very much in need of work. So that e they included this time around. We have done prior roads in Cranberry Manor. They included Oak Branch Road, uh, Piney Branch Road, Pinehurst Drive and Warren Drive. Uh, that project is complete. There were some punch list items. Um, hopeful they've been done, but if not, they will be done soon. And the other project that I do just want to mention, so in the recent weeks, East Windsor was awarded 
a $600,000 grant from the New Jersey Department of Transportation, again from the uh, municipal aid uh, program for roadway improvements. Uh, and these funds were awarded to do work uh, further south in East Windsor on Hawthorne Drive, Iris, Howie, uh, Ivy Lane East, and then um, a good portion of Brooklawn. So uh, we are in the process of soliciting uh, engineering services uh, proposals so that we can do the first step as required by the state. And then we are hopeful that we will be able to be out uh, in the spring summer of 2022 uh, doing the work on those roadways. Right around the corner down the street is something called the East Windsor Senior Center. Yes. Bring us up to date. So um, it's uh, uh, top three topics that um, I get asked these days. Uh, and uh, it's good news and not good news. I guess that's kind of the way I present it. So the great news is that the mayor and council committed last year, uh, actually a little bit the year before, uh, to doing a major expansion project at the East Windsor Senior Center. Uh, the center was busting at the seams. Uh, the membership and participation had skyrocketed uh, to levels that we really couldn't handle any longer in the existing site. And as a result, unfortunately, people were being locked out of classes. Uh, uh, they uh, were not uh, being able to participate in some of the social events uh, uh, because we had to uh, cut off uh, at a certain uh, number. So. The existing 11,000 square foot center is having added to it uh, 5,000 square feet uh, in the rear and just under 800 square feet to the south of um, the center. So those are the two areas that the work is being done. The work uh, is ongoing. We received some grant money uh, to underwrite some of the costs. Uh, we did award a, we, not, we went out to bid, we awarded a contract to the low bidder uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, behind. Um, the project uh, under the supervision of the architect got started a little bit later than, uh, in my humble opinion, it should have. Uh, it did not get started till late November 2020 uh, when the weather had turned cold and rainy. Uh, and uh, even though we had awarded the project over the summer and we'd had an early uh, pre-con, uh, but uh, they have been out there. Uh, the project is delayed at this point several months, uh, both the start, as well as some of the weather conditions, as well as getting inventory uh, for uh, some of the product that is needed for the center, and other reasons that I think I just don't know, um, to be quite honest. Uh, so uh, work is going on. If you go out there, you'll see there has been uh, you know, very significant progress on the expansion work. Uh, and that's good because there were periods of time earlier that it was hard to tell <laughs> uh, if work was going on. So this is all good. I know I just went out uh, and uh, took a peek over the weekend. Uh, and we don't have a schedule. We have been asking the architect to provide an updated schedule so we can know when the center will open. But, um, you know, expect uh, it will be sometime soon. Um, and we will keep you posted. And maybe the other thing I'm just going to touch on, because we do get asked by residents, and I know I just addressed it in a message in the December uh, newsletter for the senior center. So no, you cannot go in and use some of the space. Uh, it is not safe. Um, so what happens is, and especially because of the way that the work is being done. So the work in the rear is to expand and reconfigure the multi-purpose rooms. So it's not even that there's just an addition. They're actually all being reconfigured. Uh, the recess stage is being moved um, to uh, further back in the building and there are other adjustments being made so that we have more flexible use of that um, that space and that we can uh, partition the rooms up in a uh, more effective way for use. Uh, during the work, uh, electricity and heat are, are not abundant. That whole area is closed off and that is true on the south side as well. So there is a little bit of space in the lobby in the front area that is used by our staff and by the nutrition program. Uh, so that um, they can continue the nutrition program by drive-through and our staff can continue to, um, you know, answer phones and uh, do the newsletter and uh, do program uh, creation there. So uh, you cannot go in the center. We have no use of any of the space of the center while it's under construction. 
Uh, and that is the answer to all of my uh, most favorite senior citizens in East Windsor and Heightstown that asked me that question. Meanwhile, um, we have a great uh, senior coordinator and assistant, and they have been very proactive in identifying other spaces where uh, programs can be hosted in person. So we have many things going on. We also are continuing to do many programs on Zoom, so those are accessible. Uh, the newsletter at this point has transitioned from weekly to monthly because we are doing many things in person right now. And if you pick up the newsletter, you go online, you can read it. Uh, you can see what the different schedules are, uh, and you can see how to sign up and participate. The other uh, last comment I'll make is that the community bus has become available in the recent months as well. And so Monday through Thursday, that is also uh, available for doctor's appointments, shopping, and such uses. You need to call the center uh, to sign up and get uh, use of the bus. And on uh, Fridays and other uh, opportunities, it's used for trips. So we are providing trips again uh, through the senior center. So that's all movement in a good direction, all positive, and uh, you know we'll be uh, we'll be at that finish point uh, sometime soon. And trust me, I'm looking for it more than you all are at this point. So speaking of good news, bad news, we're in the holiday party season, and uh, the bad news is that. People sometimes have a tendency to drink and drive, and there's a program called Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over, which sums it all up. Yeah, so this is a uh, statewide enforcement program. Uh, East Windsor was selected as one of the municipalities to receive grant funding uh, from the uh, state, uh, from the Division of Highway Traffic Safety, and the idea of that is to underwrite salaries of police officers for added enhanced activities that are directed at the um, detection and apprehension of intoxicated drivers. Uh, the experience is Dick indicated as that unfortunately during the holiday season, uh, many times people are out and about, they're at different events and parties and hosting parties and uh, sometimes people don't use as good sense as they should. And certainly one thing you never ever want to do is get behind a car uh, after you've been drinking. Um, you know, the, uh, it doesn't take much for there to be a fatal um, incident, and so we want to make sure you don't do that. Um, we're asking you not to do that, uh, to use your good sense, uh, but this is an added enhanced enforcement effort by our police department that is being participated in by many police departments throughout the state of New Jersey. It goes from December 3rd through January 1st. And speaking of the police department, they are getting new body cameras. Yeah, so the grant, the township was fortunate to uh, receive a grant. This is through a uh, grant that is hosted by the Attorney General's office. Uh, and we um, are in a uh, award of $91,700 uh, toward the purchase of body cameras for our police officers. Um, and these are those cameras that are worn by the police officers that go on. They record incidents and stops. Uh, and, you know, we have used them actually in East Windsor. We were one of the first departments uh, to implement the use of the cameras. Uh, we started back in 2017 uh, with the full cooperation uh, of the uh, police department. The officers were supportive of the use of the cameras because, you know, you see a lot on the television and uh, sometimes too much noise. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, they, are, uh, they provide a transparency and they provide a uh, protection for the officers uh, that uh, if somebody comes and makes a complaint or an allegation, they have a recording of what occurred that can actually be viewed. So uh, this is a multi-year program for us. We will be replacing and updating our existing uh, body uh, camera uh, equipment and some of the accessories so that every officer uh, will have their own uh, body uh, cameras. So we appreciate the program uh, and the support uh, by the State Attorney General's Office for this. And police body armor as well. And uh, that is another uh, program that we actually we participate in every year. We get grant funds both from the uh, federal government as well as from uh, the state government. Uh, and uh, this, of course, is very important to protect our officers and uh, make sure that uh, we periodically replace the body armor that we uh, issued to them. So these are funds that are able uh, to do that. And uh, we did just receive 
a grant for just under $7,000, and it's one of two grants that we do anticipate on an annual basis uh, from the state and county government, state and federal government. And that'll do it for Spotlight East Windsor for Wednesday, December 15th. Our next update will be on Wednesday, December 29th. On behalf of East Windsor Mayor Janice Miranoff, I'm Dick Cunningham. Thank you for watching and have a happy holiday season. Thank you.